Today's recipe is from William Abishaw's Whole Body of Cookery Dissected. It's from 1682. The recipe reads thus. To make a cheese tart, take about three quarters of a pound of old cheese of Parmesan and grate it and put it into a stone mortar with about a dozen eggs, casting away six of the whites. Put therein half a pound of sweet butter melted with some ginger, cinnamon, grated nutmeg, and salt with a penny manchet grated. Season it with sugar and rose water, then beat it into so much cream that it may be thin or thinner than batter for fretters. You may make it in a dish on a sheet of paste and put over it crossbars of puff paste, so bake it and garnish it. This recipe makes quite a bit of uh, filling, so we're gonna cut it in half. We're gonna start off here with six ounces of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Now we need eggs. We need three whole eggs and three egg yolks. Now we're going to add uh, four ounces of melted butter. He calls for some interesting spices in here, some very standard ones. Of course, we've got uh, here um, a teaspoon of salt. I've got a teaspoon of ginger. I've got about a teaspoon of uh, cinnamon. And we're going to need maybe about a half a nutmeg grated up. Now the recipe calls for a penny manchet loaf grated. Manchet is a common uh, thing you'll see in recipes in the 18th century. Manchet loaves were a very white bread. The loaves were typically around a six ounce loaf. You'll see them in a lot of period paintings, especially in the 17th century. They look a bit like hamburger buns. They were baked on a big sheet with lots of loaves together. And so you'll see them where they've been pulled apart. Anyway, I've got three ounces of the manchet grated up here. We're going to toss it in. Now, this pie seems to be a very adjustable pie. If you want a savory pie, then just include one tablespoon of sugar. If you want something a little sweeter, a little bit more on the dessert end, uh, then go ahead and put in two or three tablespoons of sugar. And then after your pie is mixed, just before you slide into the oven, sprinkle sugar on top. Okay, we've got this all incorporated, and the next thing to do is to add cream until we get to a fritter-like consistency. Now that's a pretty runny batter, so we need to add quite a bit of cream. Okay, our batter looks about right. Uh, I've already got a, uh, a little... Uh, pewter bowl here lined with a short paste and uh, make sure to butter this first. These uh, pewter bowls are really great for little jobs like this. You can use them for baking. Uh, they're a perfect eating bowl. They're virtually indestructible. So uh, they're a, a great period bowl to use. You can get these on our website or uh, from our print catalog. I've got enough batter here for probably a half a dozen little tartlets this size, or at least a two regular size pies. You wanna give this batter a quick stir right before you pour it in. Now the final little garnish. Uh, we're going to put a couple of strips of puff paste uh, onto the pie. You could make a lattice, but it just calls for crossbars. That uh, looks equally good. Just gonna put that on there like that. Cut off the excess. Now I'm gonna sprinkle a little sugar on top. And now it's ready to go in the oven. This should be baked uh, at 350 in a regular home oven 
for probably 30 minutes or so for one this size. If you're doing a full size pie, it might be up to an hour. It's something you're going to want to watch as it bakes. Uh, the puff paste really helps you know when it's done and you'll also see it sort of uh, puff up a little bit and brown nicely on the top. Then you'll know it's done. Let's get this one in the oven. Well, it's all baked. It makes a very beautiful looking pie. Let's get this sliced and get a taste. This is a really good pie. It's got a very interesting texture. It's a lot more like a cheesecake texture. Even though it's got a lot of Parmesan cheese, it doesn't have a real hard uh, Parmesan bite. You can leave it like this. It's, it makes a nice savory pie if you don't put too much sugar in it. It would go great with fruit. If you want to add uh, more sugar to it, you can make a nice uh, dessert pie. It's not very overbearing at all. So if you want to add a little bit more uh, one spice of the other so you can get a, a real uh, different kind of flavor, it's a great pie that makes a base for many different flavors. 